Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the comic book review series. And today I am going to be talking about Justice League Infinity, which was a mini series that came out in 2021 and ran for seven issues. And it's a tie in to the DC animated universe, or as it's fondly referred to by longtime fans as simply the DCAU. And it's a continuation slash sequel to the Justice League Unlimited animated series, which concluded in 2006. And this seven part mini series picks up from the end of the final episode, Destroyer. And just as it says in the name, Infinity, this mini series dabbles into the concept of the multiverse. And it wouldn't be the first time that the DCAU has referenced and addressed the multiverse. The first time that this was referenced and mentioned was back in an episode called Brave New Metropolis in Superman the Animated Series Season 2, where Lois Lane accidentally time travelled to a parallel universe in a timeline where their Lois Lane was killed. And as a result of her death, Superman went over the edge, turned rogue, ditched his classic uniform and started wearing this Nazi military-like attire and teamed up with Lex Luthor in a bid to save Metropolis. And in that episode, it showed you the dangers and the possibilities of what would happen if Superman ever turned rogue. And it wouldn't be the last time that this was actually addressed. The next time this was referenced was in Justice League Season 2 in a classic two-part episode called A Better World, where in that timeline, Lex Luthor was the president, he had the Flash murdered, and as a result of the Flash's death, Superman and the Justice League not only overthrew the government, Superman murdered and lobotomized Lex Luthor, and as a result of those actions, the Justice League declared themselves as the Justice Lords in a bid to wipe out crime. So again, just as Brave New Metropolis dabbled into the concept of Superman turning rogue, it was taken to the next level with the possibility and dangers of what if the Justice League went rogue. And although the Justice Lords officially only appeared in two episodes, the aftermath and the repercussions of those actions would be felt in a classic story arc called Cadmus, where Amanda Waller put together the Cadmus group in a bid to combat the Justice League if they ever went down the same path as the Justice Lords. And in my opinion, that was probably the finest storytelling that the DCAU has dabbled into. So in Justice League Infinity, in all seven parts, a lot of references from Brave New Metropolis are addressed in this miniseries and also there are a couple of other surprises as well as far as the multiverse is concerned. So what I'm going to be doing for today's special edition, I'm going to be talking about all seven issues individually. So we're going to start with issue one of Justice League Infinity. So we're going to have a look. So it's a very good strong opener and as you can see here we see Amazo traveling through space and time. Now Amazo was a villain who appeared in the show and he was a robot that was created by Lex Luthor and basically Amazo was this machine that could replicate any member of the Justice League and use their abilities against them. So for example if he was fighting Superman Amazo would acquire and scan Superman's powers and use it against him. Or if he was fighting the Green Lantern, he would get possession of the Green Lantern's power ring and start using its abilities against him. And if he was fighting Batman, he would be able to counteract every one of Batman's moves and gadgets. So a very dangerous villain, in my opinion. So we're going to have a look. And this is called Cracked Mirror Part One. So as you can see here, Amazo is traveling through space and time and he's more or less seeking answers. He's not necessarily looking for conflict. And as you can see here, it's all the different mirrors of the multiverse. There's even like a little mini door as well, as you can see, and they all lead to like different timelines as well. 
So an interesting way to look at the multiverse. And we see John Jones. This is the first time we've seen him since the end of Destroyer. He's living as an Indian woman in New Delhi, India, and he's just more or less in semi-retirement from crime fighting because if you recall a few episodes back in Justice League Unlimited, John Jones more or less, wouldn't necessarily say he quit the team, but he more or less just went off to do his own thing and took on a human form of Detective John Jones and just lived a normal life, really. So John Jones was, would only come out in action if there was like a major danger, like Destroyer, for example. So we see here John Jones is more or less living as a human. He's even got his own apartment as well, as you can see. So he's just more or less doing his own thing. But I think the door's always left open if he wanted to come back. And we see the new Metro Watchtower. Now, we saw the tower in Batman Beyond the Call in Season 3. So it looks like the Justice League have now based themselves on planet Earth. Because if you remember in the Cadmus story arc, lots of people were complaining about the fact that they had this giant watchtower floating over space. And they even shot a death ray into the desert in one episode. So the Justice League have more or less, you know, as you can see there, They've just more or less like converted to grounded base where they can keep a better eye on people and protect them. So good move. So here is Wally, a.k.a. The Flash, my favourite Flash, by the way. And we see the Justice League have thrown him a surprise birthday party. So that's pretty cool. So look here. <laughs> I love how Batman just standing there like, I don't do birthday parties. <laughs> that was quite funny. And you see like um, Barda, who's usually a super serious soldier. And you see her just like saying, happy birthday. So it's quite fun to see that. And I love that we see Booster Gold there. So that's quite cool as well. And um, we've got Mr. Miracle. We've got Shira. We've got John Stewart. We've got basically the entire gang here. And look at that. I almost forgot. Elongated then. Brilliant. So... It's nice to see that they actually reference certain events of the show. And there's a cool line here that Batman says, For the record, I hate birthday parties. And uh, Diana says, You have to forgive Molly. He has a difficult time expressing his feelings, don't you, Bruce? And you can see Batman just smirking there a little bit. You would know. <laughs> and there's even a little bit here where Shira just more or less gives a low blow to John Stewart. She more or less says here, John thought we were talking about him, the ex and the current girlfriend comparing notes. It might be hard for you to fatten, Mr. Stewart, but you're not the centre of the universe. Ouch. Look at that. <laughs> now, um, in another episode in Justice League Unlimited, Batman and John Stewart went to a timeline where they met their older son, which was Rex Stewart, a.k.a. Warhawk. <laughs> so the possibility that there was a future where Rex Stewart was conceived by John Stewart and Shire. And there was even like a comic book in Batman Beyond many years ago, which showed you what happened to Vixen. And we also saw Shire and John Stewart get together. So even though there's still friction and tension between these two, we both know, we all know that they're eventually going to get together. It's just a matter of when. So um, we see Shira more or less in her own thoughts. And it wouldn't be a birthday party without gate crashes. And there's none bigger than Granny Goodness and the Parademons. So this is definitely the sort of thing you would see in an episode of the Justice League. You know, lots of warmth and straight into the action, as you can see. And it's a pretty cool fight. So we see more or less every Justice League member in action fighting Granny Goodness and her army of parademons. And also we see Amazo comes face to face with a mirror version of himself. And he just basically just cracks the mirror. So he's basically he's questioning himself about what am I and who am I? And um, once again, Amazo is still searching for answers and we see the Justice League are still continuing to fight the Paradigms. 
and then Calabac and the Manhunters have decided to uh, join the party. As you can see there, pretty epic fight, considering that this is only the first issue. And um, meanwhile, we see Jean Jones detects danger, and I believe he's going to join them soon enough. Yeah, this is a pretty epic battle. Really cool, this is. So you see Bard is not in a party mood anymore. That is unbelievable. And look at the way Mr. Miracle's got the mother box. He's going to send Granny Goodness and Colourback and all the parademons and manhunters away. Pretty epic way to get rid of them. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Listen to the flash. Best birthday ever! <laughs> and Batman's more or less saying, Glad you're happy, Flash, because you're going to be cleaning this mess up. Brilliant. I actually heard that in Kevin Cornwell's voice. That's brilliant. And now comes the shocking ending. So we see Superman and Larissa having dinner right there. And we see a little crack there in the window. And Superman disappears. But look who shows up. Overman. Now... In Brave New Metropolis, he was never actually addressed as Overman, although that's what he was known for. This is actually the first time in this miniseries that Superman from Brave New Metropolis timeline is addressed as Overman. So Overman is now in Superman's place, and we don't know where Superman's gone. So I would imagine he's probably gone to some other timeline or parallel universe. But yeah, pretty cool way to end the first issue very good strong opening for this seven part mini series really enjoyed it you know seeing a mazo flying through space and time and you know bashing mirrors and seeing like an evil doppelganger version of himself and then you had all the parademons and granny goodness and colorback and the manhunters all joining in trying to you know take out the justice league in flash's birthday party so great first issue Justice League Infinity issue one, really enjoyed this and really gets off to an epic start. And the way this one ended was just incredible. So Superman's gone, Overman is in his place. So it looks like that Overman didn't redeem himself after all, because if you remember at the end of Brave New Metropolis, he said he wanted to win back the people's trust. And Lois said it will take time, but eventually they will trust you again. So something's clearly gone wrong and happened. So we'll probably will find out soon enough. And also, I like how Overman has added a black cape to his attire. So he doesn't just look like a soldier anymore. He just basically looks like a dark, twisted version of Superman. So I like that. So it's a nice little upgrade. So there you have it. Justice League Infinity Issue 1. Fantastic first issue and a great way to kick off this seven-part miniseries. So we move on to the next issue, which is Justice League Infinity issue two. And just as you can see in the cover, the Justice League are now taking on Overman from the Brave New Metropolis timeline. And this is a great follow up to the first issue, which really kicked off this mini series with a bang. And basically what's happened so far is at the end of issue one, we saw Superman teleported out of his apartment into another timeline we don't know where yet and in his place is overman from brave new metropolis so we see that he's more evil and more darker than ever and he clearly didn't redeem himself as we were led to believe at the end of the season two episode of superman the animated series and yeah he's basically doesn't understand how he got here and he's blaming Lois for it. So let's find out what's happened. And we see also here. Amazo is still travelling through space and time. Looking for answers. And he comes across a mirror version of himself. And destroys the mirror. So this is just more or less picking up where we left off. From the end of issue one. And. Very lost. Very confused. He doesn't know what's going on. And we slowly see all the mirrors of the multiverse start breaking down. And um, we even get a little glimpse here of um, 
brave new metropolis world as well and we hear um mazo saying you speak in riddles you mock me and yeah he's basically seen a, himself in the mirror no pun intended and this is the cracked mirror part two and we see where superman has ended up he's ended up in brave new metropolis and he's in a world where the name superman is feared and everybody hates him so yeah, look at that and superman you know very angrily says what's wrong with all of you people oh boy and we see um, in Brave New Metropolis, we see an army of Brainiac drones, clearly the program to do Overman's bidding. And Superman comes face to face with their universe's Brainiac. Mm, it's, it's an okay look, but it just looks like a very generic evil android. I would have liked if they just kept the traditional Brainiac look with the three symbols on his head. Maybe give him a bit of a different look but here he just looks very very generic so there's overman that's something you wouldn't see that's how you know it's not superman because superman would never do that to lois so he's more or less looking for answers how did i end up here and lois obviously remembers the symbol in his chest she says i've seen that chest symbol before but you're not him are you and you hear overman say and you remind me of someone, a woman I once knew, a reporter, who stuck her nose where it didn't belong, who betrayed the great leader and paid for that betrayal with her life. Right? Great leader? What are you talking about? Where did you come from? And what did you do with Superman? See, I'm actually reading that, and I can actually hear Dana Delaney's voice when I'm reading the dialogue. So it's, it's quite cool. I like the way they've kept true to the dialogue of the DCAU. So it's, it's quite nice. And clearly Lois has been taking cues from Batman because she's got a kryptonite gun and she more or less just blasts Overman there. So she's obviously has come well and truly prepared. Clearly um, Overman doesn't know what kryptonite is, although he probably has an idea of the effects it has. So we see he's ready to fry her but he thinks better of it and just leaves and Lois just says I've got to call the league so why did he stop me she asked why did he let me live hmm, why did he so we see back on New Delhi we see John Jones has been getting tra head traumas about a danger so he's flying off to the US to meet with the Justice League as you can see there And also, this is one of my favourites of this issue, Overman fighting the Justice League. I've always wanted to see that in the DCOU. We've never really got to see that. Justice League fighting an evil version of Superman. I know we did get something like that in the Justice League DCEU movie, but that was just more Superman just coming back from the dead. But this is like full-on bad guy Superman, and I love it. You know, I love evil Superman stories. They never get old but i do feel they've been kind of been overdone a little bit but the early evil superman stories are just brilliant so we see here superman is taking out the brainiac drones and there's no doubt who's behind all this the savage man himself van savage and uh superman is more or less fighting his army of soldiers and he comes face to face with three people who, in another timeline, are his worst enemies. So we've got, as you can see there, we've got General Zod, Doomsday, and a female version of Metallo. And these guys are good guys, and they're referred to as the Freedom Fighters. And this General Zod is General Abraham Zodesta, or Zod for short. Remember in the old comics, he was called Drew Zod. So General Zod never actually appeared in the show, although he did appear in a tie-in comic of the Justice League Unlimited with the Candle 16. So we're seeing a different incarnation of Zod. So we also see here the battle rages on 
with Overman and the Justice League. Pretty epic fight here. And uh, we also see Jean Jones steps in. Enough! <laughs> Brilliant here. And we see Jean Jones gets into Overman's head and yeah, you can see here pretty much a, a broken man here. And we see, listen to the dialogue here. I know my Martian friend well, so I know how carefully he treads in the minds of others, but he tore through Overman's psyche without hesitation. And what I saw, he told me later, was enough to break my heart. Years ago, an innocent child, a survivor, Superman, like you, of a doomed planet, but unlike you, he landed in the heart of a nightmare, raised, exploited by a fascist dictator named Vandal Savage. So that's why Overman. So it's not clearly not the brave new metropolis superman it's another version but it looks very similar to him so in this timeline he clearly didn't redeem himself at all and we see more vandal savage's actions and corruption wearing down superman and we more or less hear and learn that overman is a broken man but he learns that something has changed. And then meanwhile, we see the multiverse is starting to break down and Amazo is just falling in time and space. It's a fantastic second issue, I must say. So in issue two, Overman is now in Superman's world and Superman is in Overman's world in a timeline where Vandal Savage corrupted him and took over and his mind and basically just turned the entire world into like this world war ii sort of s kind of world and he meets the freedom fighters consisting of general zod doomsday and a female metallo so good stuff here and the battle with overman and the justice league for me is the highlight of this issue so there you have it justice league infinity issue two fantastic and this series just continues to get better already and we're only two issues in brilliant and now we move on to the next issue which is issue three and as you can see by the cover it's clearly a meeting of the justice league of two earths so we got the normal justice league and we got the other justice league as well and as you can see there i like how um over here you got the um brave and the bold look as you can see there so that's quite cool so clearly the multiverse is breaking down so it looks like we're going to see our Justice League and a version for Justice League come together. So this should be a lot of fun to take a look at. So in issue two, we learned that Overman was corrupted by Vandal Savage and Superman is already in his world and he's teamed up with the Freedom Fighters. So this issue just more or less picks up where he left off. And at the end of issue two, we saw Amazo just falling into space and time while he's still trying to seek answers. So let's have a look. So here we have a universe with a very different Justice League, as you can see there. And oh, look at that. He looks very similar to Kyle Rayner from the mainstream Justice League comics. So this looks like an incarnation of the Super Friends or something similar to that. This is the mirror cracked so we see both martians are in sync with each other and also on this side we've got overman is being held prisoner by the justice league after a fierce battle in issue two so um, we're more or less seeing them interrogating overman about what's happened to superman look at that so Overman's tried to escape and John, John Stewart has more or less contained him. Not an easy thing to do, you know, when you're trying to battle an evil Superman, you know, trying to contain him. It's not an easy thing. I like this. Listen to this bit here. I have travelled the hellish landscape of your psyche once, Carl Kent. 
and I'd prefer not to do it again, but I will if you force my hand. Oh boy. And you see Overman starts screaming at Jean and shows, just stay out of my head. Yikes. So Jean Jones is more or less saying that he didn't want to come back to the Justice League. He was more than happy to leave the rest of the team to save the world. And um, Diana says, but someone you care about has disappeared. So I like that's a reason to bring Jean Jones out of retirement or semi-retirement or exile, whatever you want to call it. So um, look at that. That is awesome. Bit of dialogue there. You t but you too have lost someone you care about. It's clouding your vision. And Lois is up and <laughs> screaming. You're reading my mind? It's not your mind, Lois. It's your heart. Oh, boy. So after meeting the Freedom Fighters, General Zod, Metallo and Doomsday are just like showing him around their underground base, like a resistance group. We've seen things like this before. We saw this in... Savage time, you know, we saw this in Brave New Metropolis. So this is nice little callbacks to those classic episodes. Yeah, Doomsday and Superman never gets old. So um, we see another Earth's Superman has teleported into the Savage timeline. And... Um, this is quite a fun moment here. So, clearly a, a good Superman, but he doesn't know where he's at. So he's more or less going at it with the Freedom Fighters. And this is definitely something you would have seen in Super Friends. So two Supermen meet each other, and they eventually, there's a show of admiration and respect from both Supermen. So I, I thought that was quite cool. So you think that two Supermen are about to go at it, and the next thing you know, they stop, look at each other, and they smile. And it's nice. I like that. So there's the Watchtower in space. So we've got two towers. We've got the Metro Tower on Earth, and then we still got the classic Watchtower in space. So it's kind of like we've got two teams on both planets. So these two Supermen are trying to figure out how they ended up where they are but wait a minute how can we both be here you're you're right shouldn't we have switched places hmm. so um diana disappearing it's like a call back to the once and future thing part two so bruce obviously remembers what happened before she's gone why hasn't someone else appeared in her place? Someone has, says Batman. This, this has to stop. I seriously would have loved this to be an animated movie or an episode at least. It was that good. We've uh, got a, a gold javelin. I always remember the javelin being silver, so it's nice that we got a gold javelin. Funded by Wayne Aerospace. <laughs> nice. So um, they more or less travel through space and time. And um, we see where Dyne has ended up. So Diana has ended up on some sort of ice planet, as you can see there. Look at that. And this is where another surprise comes in. Hello, Diana. Can I give you a hand? Dark side. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The cool thing about this mini series so far is I love these little surprises and shout outs to some of the classic episodes of what like, Superman and the Justice League and the Justice League Unlimited shows. I just love it. So there's issue three of Justice League Infinity. 
Diana has been teleported to an ice world and she goes into the cave and she meets Darkseid who offers to help her and we see Superman and another version of Superman meet each other and uh, Overman is essentially a broken man so due to Vandal Savage's influence and corruption but very fun issue love the cover as well this is just continuing to get better and better so there you have it Justice League Infinity issue 3 brilliant really digging this mini series a lot and now we move on to issue 4 of the Justice League Infinity yeah and as you can see by the cover it's it's pretty messed up what's going on here but I'm sure there's more to this than just meets the cover no pun intended so we're going to have a quick look at what's going on here so Dino is transported to another timeline and she encounters Darkseid and we see here so far Amazo is falling through space and time and yeah this is clearly not the dark side that Diana fought in Destroyer this is a different dark side because he's offering to help her and also we see all the mirrors of the multiverse starting to break down even more and this is called the mirror cracked which is part four of course so it's understandable Diana would be angry because you know dark side's like the worst villain you can ever meet so look at that that's pretty epic look at the way Diana just manhandles dark side a lot of people say Diana is like the second strongest hero after Superman not hard to see why and Diana's are like beating the tar out of dark side and she's saying to him what's the matter with you why won't she fight back and dark side more or less says because i lost the will to fight thousands of years ago and Diana pretty much stops dead in her tracks and says you're not him are you you're not the dark side i know and dark side more or less says and you are not my diana so clearly in this timeline diana has pretty much died here so that's why dark side's sad and um, we're going to see a bit more what's going on here so we get a cool flashback of going on here the big war Diana was trying to more or less end it oh look you never realize that we've got Hal Jordan will be the first time he's cameoed in a alternate timeline so Diana and Darkseid in this timeline were married, which is pretty messed up, really. I don't know what's more messed up Superman as Darkseid's son or Diana as Darkseid's wife. I think both are pretty messed up. But yeah, as you can see there, they were mar married as husband and wife. And we also see here. The Justice League are still traveling through space and time to try and locate Superman. You can see there. So we get a bit more here of yeah, that. I wouldn't trust him over man. So they're more or less just like trying to locate Superman and um Batman's more or less saying here, as if a million universes are forcing their way into my mind all at once. And Batman's like trying to convince him. Says, Listen, Bijan, you're stronger than this. You're stronger than anyone I know. You lost your entire family, your entire world, but you found the will to survive and begin again. You can do this again. And Jean Jones says, I can't. So this is pretty, pretty intense stuff here. And they finally learn that it's a Mezo trying to get through on the other side look at that that's just epic you know as i go through all this really makes me wish that we got another you know show or another sequel or something of the justice league or even an animated movie i would have definitely loved to have seen this as an animated movie because the scale of it's just so grand and so epic so um we're seeing here the flashback of 
Diana's death just left Darkseid pretty much a broken man. And uh, things only get worse if he decides to show up. Old Hades himself, Lord Hades. <laughs> Can you imagine that? It's bad enough you got Darkseid, but to have Darkseid and Lord Hades, that's pretty messed up, you know? So um, Dino's obviously not in a happy mood. And uh, we see Lord Hades and Wonder Woman going at it. Look at that. Absolutely epic. And Darkseid does something that you'd never see Darkseid normally do. Well, in any universe. Darkseid pretty much sacrifices himself to take out Lord Hades on his Omega Beams. Look at that. That's just unbelievable and um, we see a great scene here save your strength I'll get you back to the cave and dark says it's too late for me sweet Dinah but you you can and yeah dark side pretty much dead it's funny that the greatest villain in the world would make the greatest sacrifice in the world to ensure Dinah's safety look at that And um, this is how it ends here. Help has arrived. The Justice League. And the Justice League. So they've located Diana. So Superman from Savage Time World has brought their Justice League and found Diana. So it's a cool way to end this, I think. So four issues in. It's already getting more and more epic by the minute. So really, really good this is. So there you have it. Justice League Infinity issue four. Fantastic. Really loving this, I am. And now we move on to issue five of Justice League Infinity. And so far what's happened is Dinah has teleported to another world where their Wonder Woman has married Darkseid and she died in battle. And we had a little surprise appearance from Lord Hades. And we saw Lord Hades and Darkseid go at it. And as he tried to take her out, Darkseid sacrificed himself to save Diana. So that was quite an interesting twist. And then that's the very end. We saw Superman and another Earth's incarnation of the Justice League come to the rescue. So that was kind of a cool way to end that. And we also see in issue four that Amazo is trying to get through to the other side. So issue five is pretty much picking up from where we left off at the end of four. So let's get straight into this. Creepy beginning there. And this is the mirror cracked. So there's the um, Justice League. Well, that Earth's Justice League. We have Superman. I love how Hawkman's based on the Super Friends sort of look. I thought that's pretty cool. And Superman's, well, that version of Superman. Say, so Princess Diana, I'd like to introduce you to. It's pretty clear who he is. <laughs> so this team is referred to as the Justice Alliance. So it's pretty cool here. And uh, Superman's more or less explaining uh, one instant I was having dinner with Lois and the next thing you know, and look, Diana says, not yet. There's something I need to do first. So she honors Darkseid and um, their Earth's Diana. And they take off into the javelin. So this is incredible here. Look at that. Nice. So, this one born was the survivor of Civil War on famous on Paradise Island, and she's the sole survivor. A bit weird. And Diana can't understand why she's so cold. And um, S Superman says, "From what I've seen, Unati is more like you than you may realize." 
but it's true that the differences between these infinite births can be vast and terrible. Sounds like you're talk, speaking from experience. And we see um, the Freedom Fighters. So they're more or less like working together now. That's pretty cool here. So we've got the two Supermen working together. So they're going to try and stop Vandal Savage once for all. They're going to Savage's Fortress. And um, look at that. Two good Supermen is better than having one, I say. So we see them taking out the Brainiac drones. It's a pretty epic battle here. You see that the battle rages on. I like how um, there's uh, tons of copies of Vandal Savage. So this is getting really serious now. We see General Zod in full military combat mode and there is Vandal Savage or an older version of Vandal Savage look at that because that's something we're not used to seeing an older Vandal Savage we're so used to seeing him looking young and immortal so to see him looking really really old and really looking his age it's an interesting twist so we see um, Vandal Savage has taken out General Zodesta And he's more or less trying to take out the Justice League. Look at that. And uh, we see what's going on here. Basically, what we're seeing here the creature behind. The glass he explains that since the day vandal savage wrenched me from my world and locked me away in this laboratory my only companion has been my pain so we see him get released this creature and uh yeah, it's pretty much uh, an alien who's more or less trapped here so it's um looks like it's john jones of this earth Um, we see the two, or at least two Johns meeting each other. And as you can see there, it's quite a horrible way to go. So we see Superman and Diana and the Justice Alliance are travelling away now. And uh, yeah, look what we got here. Pretty shocking stuff here. But yeah, really good issue here, issue five. You can see it's really slowly getting to the climax now. So there you have it, issue five of Justice League Infinity. Really getting big now, really getting good and yeah, fantastic. And as I said, it's really getting close to the final two parts now of this seven parts mini series and now we move on to the next issue which is issue six of justice league infinity and by this point the justice league have teamed up with the justice alliance which is another incarnation of the justice league from another universe and the two teams work together to try and stop vandal savage who by this point has pretty much turned into a very ugly and old bitter man and he took out general zodesta and we're seeing the justice league the justice alliance and the freedom fighters they're all like working together to try and stop vandal savage and as we see the justice league and the justice alliance leave they um travel back in time and they see like the javelin is ripped apart and they see all the other justice league members are floating in space so we're going to take a look at what happens 
from here. So you can see by this point now, the multiverse is breaking down, as we've been seeing over the course of these issues with Amazo. And this is called The Mirror Cracked, which is part six of this mini story arc. So you can see here, everything's just ripped apart. Look at this. I mean, this is like, unbelievable. Look at that. So we're seeing like the whole multiverse is just more or less breaking down here. And Amazo is searching for questions that the League couldn't even begin to understand. There's some very uh, powerful stuff going on here. And we see... Look at this. We've got more or less here. Amazo and all of the universes are colliding and collapsing, bringing, you know, the whole world to an end. And uh, John Jones is more or less trying to stop him. So Batman has come to the conclusion that all the mirrors need to be repaired. Otherwise, kaboom. And we see the evil Amazo has been trying to break out of the mirror and we saw that a few early issues back there we go and it's getting really really serious now so he's basically he's an evil version of Amazo from another universe trying to get through to the other side and there he is there's his true form good stuff here and he more or less says here to understand my needs you must first understand me wow so we see here apocalypse and the entire universe look at this what happens here now from my understanding it looks like dark side Or at least um, a version of Dark Side. So we got Overman. We got basically all the universes colliding, and there he is up there, right there, with the evil Amazo. So he's referred to as Amazo Two. So we got the Justice League and the Justice Alliance all working together to try and stop this evil Amazo and uh, they've got to also deal with Overman as well as you can see there so it looks like um, Bruce Wayne of that earth he's referred to as Terence Wayne wow so it looks like the Joker of his earth broke his back Oh, I love this. Look at this. <laughs> so it looks like uh, Shire is getting ripped apart here by Amazo 2. Look at that. Shire! <laughs> you know, I can actually hear Phil Lamar's voice. So like, Shire! Oh wow. Getting serious now. And Vixen realizes that you know John Stewart is still in love with Shira, which is no surprise really. So we got the two John Jones is working together. So we've basically just seen the entire world just uh, crumbling. That is, that is a pretty cool look, I must say. Cool design for a meso. So we see a is now trying to reason with his 
evil doppelganger. He's saying that we are twin souls, you and I, each one incomplete without the other. Together we can find the purpose that we could never find apart. But the anti-life has warped you, brother, corrupted you. Look at that. So he's more or less trying to plead with him to stop what he's doing. But of course that falls on deaf ears. And Amazo 2 is saying that the game is over and it is now time to unleash the anti-life on all creation. Oh boy. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Six issue. So Amazo 2 has found the anti-life equation and he's basically just going to use it on the entire multiverse. But yeah, great way to close out issue six. So getting now to the finale of this mini series. But there you have it. Justice League Infinity issue six. Fantastic. And now we move on to the final part of this mini series, and that is issue seven of Justice League Infinity. So what we've seen so far is Amazo has been traveling through space and time and trying to look for answers. And he comes across Amazo 2, who's now found the anti-life equation. And we've got the Justice League and the Justice Alliance trying to stop Amazo 2. And they've also got to deal with Overman. And we saw at the very end of issue six, Amazo 2 has found the anti-life equation. And instead of just using it to wipe out the Justice League and the Justice Alliance, he's just going to use it on the entire universe to destroy the multiverse. Because the multiverse, as we've been seeing over the course of all seven parts now, has been collapsing and falling apart. So now it really comes to a massive climax so we're going to have a look at how this all plays out here so this more or less just picks up where we left off from the end of issue six so amazo 2 has used the anti-life equation and to wipe out the entire universe and here is the results as you can see space and time just getting wiped out of existence very similar to like Crisis on Infinite Earths, as you can see there. And it's just darkness. And luckily you've got the Green Lantern here because that's always left the space and time. Just nothing. Pretty scary here. And um, everyone's trying to like reassure each other not to lose hope. And it looked like Shire had died as well. And um, we hear Super Batman saying, if Superman were here, we'd probably say, he'd probably say, even in the darkest times, especially in the darkest times, we have to hold on to hope. And Diana says, you believe that? No, Diana, but I'd like to. And that's got to count for something. So Batman's trying to stay optimistic here. Flash is always trying to crack a joke, even if it's at the wrong time, but he's got good intentions. So we see John Jones has delved into Diana's mind, you know, about meeting the other dark side who sacrificed himself to stop Lord Hades and save her. So we see there pretty much um, Diana being torn apart by celestial energies. So the combined energies of Batman and Wonder Woman together. And we see uh, Amazo get wiped out of existence too. You can see. He's more or less just become like a demon now. So we see the combined energies of Batman and Wonder Woman. I think this will lead to, yeah, it does. 
the combined energies of Batman and Wonder Woman allow the multiverse to be restored and everyone brought back. So that's quite cool. Goes back from where? That's a question we will surely debate for years to come. Batman and Wonder Woman, are they? We're fine, John. Everything's fine. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Batman and Wonder Woman laughing together. Look. Oh my god. <laughs> That's something you don't see every day. So, the combined celestial energies of Batman and Wonder Woman was enough to restore the multiverse back to normal. And now we learn that the Justice Alliance's Batman had his back broken thanks to the, their Joker. At least we know why he's floating around. So, kind of getting to like the end now. So, we're seeing the Justice Alliance saying to the Justice League that has been on a fighting alongside them. So, they're getting more or less ready to leave. And we see uh, Flash's birthday party here with him and Booster Cold sharing some birthday cake. And we get a, an emotional scene about Batman saying, All things happen for a reason. Is that's what you're saying? And Diane is more or less saying, yes, I believe the universe is always working toward our greater good. Batman says, it's a lovely idea, but reality contradicts it. If the experience we shared has taught us anything, it's that there are many levels to reality. My focus is usually on the ground, Diana, but I'm glad you're around to remind me to look up. Nice. Uh, a nice little bit of dialogue there. It's very cool. I know it was an illusion, John. The emotions you expressed when you thought Shire was dead were all too real. You're saying you think I still love her? I'm saying you never stopped loving her. Oh boy. Looks like it's more or less over for Vixen and John Stewart. Hey Stewart, you look like a man who could use a piece of cake. You know, I think I could. That's nice. So looks like they're getting back together. And so uh, Jean Jones is getting ready to leave now. And Superman is saying, you're a better man than I am, Jean Jones. Doubtful, but I do relish the challenge. But for now, my friends, I bid you farewell. So um, there's a nice little ending here. And Superman is saying, you found yourself face to face with Overman. I assume that Nancy Monster has swept back to his own world when the multiverse reset. He's going to find some significant changes when he gets home. I wonder if, if he can change too, after all. Somewhere in the depths of that tortured heart. So, there we are. Right there. So, if you can see there, his Lois is dead. So um, we've seen that Metallo is saying to um, Overman, get you back to court. The Freedom Fighters are ready to pass judgment. So he's more or less going to be tried for his actions. And then we see Ov Amazo back to normal, traveling through space and time, all reassembled. And he meets with the other Amazo, who's more or less now back to normal. And... Um, Elongated man says, Grodd and an army of mutant gorillas have invaded Washington. And you can actually hear Rosenbaum's voice when he says, Gorillas, again? Who are you kidding, West? You love this stuff, says Hatton. And that's pretty much how um, we end issue seven. Brilliant. Great final issue. So there you have it. That's all seven issues of Justice League Infinity. And there's the final issue, Justice League Infinity 7. Excellent. Overall, all seven parts, absolutely fantastic. Lots of callbacks to Savage Time and Brave New Metropolis. And, you know, seeing Justice Alliance from another Earth teaming up with the Justice League. And then you have all the stuff with Overman as well. And two Amazos, you know, really, really good. Uh, you know, I'd love to see something like that animated, maybe for a mini series or for an animated movie. Either way, I think they should definitely do this because this has been 
a lot of fun and hopefully in the sequel if there is going to be another one i'd definitely like to see the justice lords back because i still think there's plenty of unfinished business there so that's going to be it for me i am going to wrap this up now what did you think of justice league infinity did you enjoy it what was your thoughts on dark side from another universe married to diana and his diana dying did that shock you and also what about overman being corrupted by vandal savage do you think this time around he could actually be redeemed or do you think there's no hope for him whatsoever and also what about meso 2 using the anti-life equation to wipe out the entire multiverse did you think that was shocking and also what was your thoughts on batman and wonder woman being the ones resetting the multiverse do you think that was the right call to give them a big moments like that or do you think it could have been two other heroes you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the comic book review series so until next time take care everybody and stay safe and once again as always much appreciated thanks for listening